Okay, so we're in ATI Render Monkey, and we're going to create a shader that uh, takes. It's going to create a. Uh, it's basically a grayscale shader. It's going to apply a texture to our geometry, but it's instead of using the color of the texture, the colors within the texture, we're going to take each color and we're going to uh, turn it gray, make a grayscale image of it. So uh, we're going to right-click on our effect workspace. We're going to add a default DirectX effect, and it's just going to be textured. And as you can see from the preview, it's just a standard textured object. So we're going to open this up. Now, uh, one thing we're going to do is we're not going to be using the uh, view projection matrix, so we can delete that. And instead, we're going to be adding a new variable, a matrix variable. It's going to be predefined as a uh, world view projection. Now, what a world what a world view projection uh, is is just the world matrix multiplied by the view matrix multiplied by the projection matrix. We'll give you uh, and when we go back into our VB code, it will uh, I'll show you how to set that up. And we're going to need one more uh, variable, uh, a floating point. Uh, and we're going to call it uh, f. Actually, we'll yeah f small t multiplier. And what the multiplier is going to allow us to do is it uh, it'll be able to adjust the uh, how bright or how dark our grayscale uh, rendering is going to be. So we I think that's everything. So we double click on our vertex shader and because we deleted the uh, the view projection, the old one, we're going to have to rename that to uh, world view projection. Make this bigger. And down here we're going to have to do the same thing. World view projection. And uh, this vertex shader code, it's uh, it's simple enough that we don't need to be using uh, vertex uh, shader version 2. You can use ver version 1.1 one one and that'll work just fine. And uh, go into our pixel shader. So we're going to have to import our uh, so our our multiplier here is uh, we're going to have to import that into our pixel shader code. So float f multiplier So we're going to modify our pixel shader. We're going to cut this out. Cut, and we're going to create a new variable, uh, float for variable called color, and we're going to say color is equal to uh, a pixel from our texture, and we get the pixel color uh, from within our base map texture. Uh, we use using our uh, input texture coordinates that we get as a parameter from up there, and we're going to go. We need another variable called float average, and average is going to equal color uh, r plus color g plus color blue divided by 3, we'll get our average, and then color uh, r equals average multiplied by our f plier and uh, multiplier, yep, uh, red, green, and blue. And then we're going to return the color out as a pixel. And we can compile. Huh. I guess I guess you can do that then. I thought you could do that, but I guess you can't. So X Y Z X X Y Z Anna, Compile. Okay, 
So what's wrong with that? X Y Z. X Y Z equals average times multiplier. Oh, I know what I did. This is spelled wrong here. Rename multi P L multiplier. There. Uh, compile the effect. Uh, you'll notice we don't see anything. That's because our multiplier is zero. So if we edit this, we set this to one. And you can see that our uh, our sphere is back and it's all grayscaled, colored properly. And if we adjust this, we less than one, it goes dark, and anything greater than one will make it whiter and whiter. So that's kind of cool. So we're just going to set this back to one as a default value. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything. We're finished with the. Uh, actually, I was going to try some. Uh, actually, it turns out I was right. You can use R, G, and B as your color within your pixel uh, shader. So if we go into here and we compile, then we can see that it's working. So, uh, yeah, that's true. You, you can use X, Y, Z, or you can use uh, R, G, B, R, red, green, and blue. So that either way, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So now that we're done with our uh, shader code, we can jump into visualbasic.net and uh, create a program that will basically do the exact same thing as render a sphere on the screen and use our shader to color it in a grayscale. Uh, but, but before we do that we have to go to we have to export our shader that we just made in as a FX file. So if we go to file export FX exporter and we're just going to call it uh, just going to call it grayscale and we can save that and now we can jump over to Visual Basic. So now that we're in Visual Basic we can add our... Uh, we're just going to include our uh, FX file within our project and uh, double click and there's a couple of things that we need to do to our shader to uh, to make it compile in our program, and uh, we don't need this uh, model data on here, so we can delete that. And uh, we this uh, the base texture, we can modify this. We don't need this in here. Uh, our application is going to set the value of this uh, this texture, and our multiplier is uh, just going to be deleted, and it's going to have a default value of one. And uh, that's it. So if we go to, and there's one more thing. Uh, it's a strange, strange issue. Uh, in uh, as you saw in ATI Render Monkey, uh, this code, this vertex shader code, worked just fine. But if we were to use this, I'm going to leave it just like this for now. And uh, if we were to run this program, uh, our sphere wouldn't appear on screen. It uh, I had a lot of prob problems uh, trying to figure out why I wasn't uh, getting anything rendered on screen. And uh, in order for it to work, you have to take this, these two parameters, and swap them around, and uh, and then the shader will work. But I'll just leave this for now, and then I'll uh, I'll show you that it doesn't work, and I'll come back, change this, change this uh, line here, and then you'll see that it does work. So we're gonna jump into our code. Now it's a uh, it's pretty standard code. Uh, you should all be familiar with this. It's uh, just set up your present parameters, create your device, and uh, for our uh, to create our effect object, we're just going to call the static method uh, from file on the effect object. We're going to pass it our graphics device, and we're going to specify the file name for our shader file, and we're going to specify nothing and nothing for our include and uh, constants and uh, we're not going to have any shader flags and our effect pool is going to be nothing as well. And uh, for our sphere mesh we're just going to load it from a file uh, and our texture we're just going to load that from a file. The fieldstone texture is the same texture we used in our ATI RenderMonkey uh, demonstration. 
and uh, the base text base texture uh, value located in our shader we're just going to assign that to the texture that we just loaded and base texture you can find that uh, just above our pixel shader code as texture uh, base texture so we go to and then the, we're just using a form and the form has a timer on it and every time the timer executes uh, we're just going to check to see if our window's minimized. If it is, we just exit. We don't need to render. We're going to get our aspect ratio uh, clear and start uh, rendering the scene. And uh, we're going to set up a rotation. So uh, our application is going to work just like Render Monkey. We can rotate the sphere around and look at it from different angles. And uh, our rotation, we get our rotation from the mouse move. So uh, when you drag your left, middle, or right mouse button across the form, it'll set the X, Y, and Z uh, rotations. And now now we get back to our world view and projection matrix, matrix. So we just start out with a standard identity matrix. Then we take uh, that and we multiply it by our rotation, which is basically our, our world matrix right here. And then we multiply it by our view matrix, which we've set up here and then our projection matrix and uh, math pi uh, pi is equivalent to uh, 180 degrees so we're just going to take 180 divided by 4 and it's going to give us a 45 degree field of view and this is where we set our world view projection matrix within our shader to uh, the matrix we just set up and the technique we're using is going to be textured. If we jump back into our shader, you can see uh, it's on, this shader only has one technique and it's called textured and that's the technique we're going to use. And uh, uh, create a variable to store how many passes are within our technique. Uh, our technique only uses the one pass. So uh, we begin our uh, shader using this technique and it's going to return how many passes are within that technique so we loop through each pass and we call begin pass the index the pass index we render our geometry we now that we're done with the uh, rendering pass we end pass we just keep doing that through the passes and then after we're finished rendering the technique we just call end and now that we're done that we can end the scene and present it uh, I think that's everything up uh, grayscale, yep. Oh, and uh, when we push the up and down keys on our keyboard, it will change the uh, the multiplier uh, variable within our shader. It'll uh, change it by 0.1 up or down. And uh, this is just some closing code when our form closes. So we push play, and this it should work, but we're gonna find out here. Uh, as you can see. We don't see anything on our screen, and that's because we didn't swap those two parameters in our multiplication in our vertex shader. So we're going to close this. We're going to jump back into our shader, and uh, we're just going to swap these two around. And uh, like I said, I'm not sure why we have to do this. Um, I don't know what the difference is between our program and ATI Render Monkey that requires us to switch uh, these parameters around when we use the multiplication uh, method. So uh, I'm not sure why we have to do that. But if we run our program now, we can see that we have our sphere, and we use the left, drag the left mouse button. We can rotate it, the uh, middle mouse button, the right mouse button, and we push up on our keyboard. It can increase the brightness. If we push down, it'll decrease the brightness. And there you go.